Welcome to LOA Today. I'm Walt Thiessen here with Daniel Mangina and David Strickle, the stream of David. Today is Tuesday, September 22nd, 2020. It's 4 p.m. New York time. Wherever you are in the world, thank you for joining us for another episode of LOA Today, your daily dose of happy. And uh, Daniel and I were just kind of uh, reminiscing about the program we did last Thursday in preparation for presenting it to people in local cable access. And I just wanted to let listeners know um, there is minimal progress, not a whole lot of progress, but there is minimal progress. And I say that as kind of a way of reminding both myself and everybody else, we take little baby steps, little micro steps, just like Daniel was talking about on the show. So, Daniel, I knew you'd be proud to know I'm taking little tiny steps. Da, da, da. <laughs> and in addition to little tiny steps, I also have a little feedback for each of you about pre Prior, yeah, prior shows <laughs> that, that <laughs> we have done together. <laughs> and David, I'm going to tell you about yours first. This comes from Avinash. Um, Avinash asked a couple of questions, and, and uh, the last one, I believe, was on the last episode that you did, and the stream gave him some more information. He is the one who you may or may not remember because you have trouble remembering what happens during these sessions, but um, he had been asking about how to deal with government uh, cracking down hard on citizenry and blocking their social media and all this other stuff. And the stream had given him uh, two weeks worth of really useful information about how to get your vibration into a better place about that. And so he wrote to say, thank you for asking my question to the stream this week. It has certainly helped me in that I stopped paying them, parentheses, government, attention and decided to live in my own sort of bubble. Also, please send my gratitude to Dan for his free work on the app. It feels that his work is exactly what is needed in my life right now. So keep up the good work with the podcast, the app, and all of your guests. Regards, Avi. So actually, that was for both of you now that I see and think about it. Hmm, thank you, Avi. And I've got uh, a question for each one of you guys. And they both come from the same person, from Jim Corman. I, oh, I don't know what to do last name. I apologize, Jim. From Jim, excuse me. Ignore it. I'll, I'll just bleep out the last part. <laughs> this is from Jim. <laughs> I'm feeling good today. You know, that's what happens when you feel good. You kind of slip on stuff. Um, first, I'm going to go to Dan because he's, he's talking about the money game. And he says, hi, Dan. I started the money game and asked for $5. I haven't received that cash yet, but I did have a client ask that we invoice them $316 additional for a project we did a year ago. So this was very unexpected. I don't own the company, but I am a commissioned salesperson. However, the COVID shutdown has affected the pay structure at the company, and commissions have been ceased and salaries increased. I think I actually asked you this last Thursday, but we'll go through it again. If I were to make commission on this 316, I would meet the $5 ask, but since that's not the case, I'm uncertain if this unexpected 316 accounts, and I should proceed to the next round. And the reason I'm willing to go through that again, Dan, is this is the kind of little nuance thing that can be confusing. I mean, it seems so straightforward when you read mm -hmm. the book, and then you sit down and say, well, okay, I got this weird result. What do I do with it? What do we do with weird results? But there's no weirdness. Um, when I say there's no weirdness, I mean, if it's convoluted or complicated, it's a no. There is only one thing that matters, money in your hand or money in the bank, cash money, not coupons, not tickets, not discounts, not promises. We are practicing getting into alignment with the receivership, clean and clear, free and clear of actual moolah. So in this instance, we have the promise that should be celebrated. We have the fact that he earned some commission or he had the potential or the, the possibility to have earned commission in another timeline. That's to be celebrated, but you're not to move forward. So if you have to think about it or it feels complicated, it's a no. If it's not money in the bank to that amount or more, if it's not, if you go for 10 and you get $9, you haven't hit it, celebrate the nine. Amazing. Great work. But we're holding out for the receivership of the 10. And why do we do that? Why do we hold out like that? Because you haven't done it yet. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, you You're like that strict yet. teacher in second grade. Well, you haven't done it yet. <laughs> <laughs> you haven't done it yet. And again, we're creating a new space for receivership. And that's not half. The universe isn't half-hearted and haphazard. 
So allow yourself to fully receive all that you've asked for or more. This will better. That's it. Good answer. Very straightforward. Mm-hmm. And then Jim, who has a last name that we don't mention here on the show, <laughs> da, da, da. also had a question for David and the stream of David. He says, my question, well, actually, this is one I think I have to bring up with the stream. So I'll save that one because now that I'm reading through it, this is actually something the stream needs to directly address. So before we go there, I'm going to just go to David and say, since I don't have a direct question for David, just how are you doing? What's happening? I'm doing great. <laughs> I think I was telling you before that I just finished the Taya book, uh, my first draft of the Taya book. It's a long way from uh, publishing, probably, and that's okay. It took me two and a half years to write it. But hoo hoo, wow. that's a lot of work. Yeah, well, it, it was. It's two and a half years because Taya was what I created in my life before I ever called it Taya. And remember, I thought I didn't belong to traction also. At one point, <laughs> that was in 1982, though, to my defense, <laughs> but. Taya is really what I've, I've named the practice that I taught myself over a 10 year period to change and trans, transform every area of my life that I wanted to transform. And that's what I teach to people now. And now that I've had two and a half years history of teaching it to people and having documented transformations and amazing lives all over the world. Now I know what works, what doesn't work. It's really fine tuned. I feel like it's ready for prime time now. So that's what took two and a half years. That's so great. seeking agency to uh, to get it published. So that's, oh, that's all a, right. A whole other uh, process in and of itself, but fun nonetheless. Very good. Very good. Well, we're all uh, submitting our high vibes to you to, to help reinforce what you're doing. Because, uh-huh. I mean, well, first of all, that is a major undertaking to collect that much data. Because it's not just collection. It's generating it. I mean, you're generating that by working with all the people you've worked with during that two and a half year period and documenting it at the same time. That's a lot of work. So well done. Yeah. Yeah. This week, my, uh, my show that I do live yesterday on Home Times Radio, I had Nicole on as a guest and she was the person that took my boot camp that was homeless when she got in. Oh, yes. And oh, right. Yes. Almost to, uh, her own house at the beach, her own vehicle, her own self-supporting lifestyle for she and her daughter uh, very, very inspiring. And that hour went by so fast. Our time was up and that music starts playing in my ear. I know it's time for me to, to jump off. And I was like, wow, that's the fastest an hour has ever gone by in my life. <laughs> so that'll be the podcast. The stream of David podcast next week will be Nicole and her story. We've got Tammy who healed herself of cancer. Uh, we've got Nui who also healed herself of cancer. Uh, we have um, a woman whose name I don't want to mention in Australia who went from being a seed farmer, a minimum wage seed farmer, to a millionaire real estate investor. Wow. I mean, incredible stories, incredible, incredible stories. And, and was living alone and was bullied in her life and, and got all of this confidence together, moved on and, and got into a relationship. Now she has uh, brand new twins that she just gave birth to. She yes. doesn't have to work anymore because she has a real estate portfolio that supports her. And she was working on a seed farm, being bullied by this, this group of people every day of her life when she got in. So I just love these stories. And it, again, I've got two and a half year of worth of this now to share with people of this is, this is how people transform their lives in big, big ways, getting in and, and learning how to change their default vibration and learning right. about vibrational flow and polarity, which in my opinion is even more important to know about than the law of attraction itself. Yeah, well, because it all works together. I mean, if you only have a piece of it as you know, people who experienced the movie The Secret, learned if you only have part of it it's like enticing it's like oh, yeah this could yeah, be really cool but what's the rest, of it? Awesome. the rest of it how does the rest of it work <laughs> yeah how does how does the, how do the big things work because we've made them big right the yep. big things we make big that we think about all the time take longer because we think about them all the time and then we have this vibrational flow that comes through and when we're in a downward vibrational flow are we as sure about that topic as we are when we're in an upward vibrational flow Mm. that's that's the trick that's why law of attraction doesn't work for some people it works for everybody all the time we're attracting everything all the time just, I, just love Dan's, uh, I, I love his i don't know his money game specifically i love the idea of it i've heard a lot of great things about it but i love that don't settle don't renegotiate i talk about that all the time you renegotiate you go down in vibration, and, oh, well, that was close enough. We'll just... <laughs> <laughs> or you start negotiating a lesser version of your dream, 
Mm. Because your, your vibration is dropped. You're not as in high vibe. And now you're wondering, well, how that, how's that going to happen? That doesn't work for people like me. Oh, I don't know the process. And we start renegotiating and, and lowering our expectations. And the universe is just answering yes. If you're okay with $8 instead of 10, we'll send you $8 and you're fine. The universe is not judging. Mm. So great explanation to that. And I, I thought the same thing about the, 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 the commission. That was a very detailed explanation, but to me, it's a sure sign that you're at least heading in the right direction. Yeah. I love that you're telling people don't settle for that as being your manifestation, though. Mm. That's just the universe sending you a little sign that you're on a good track. It's a synchronicity. That's a sign. That's a, that's a, a thumbs up. Keep going. Yeah. 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 And there's, there's a few more laps, but well but, done on this one. Thumbs up. Yeah. That we're vibrationally heading in the right direction. There's a right mm. direction toward what we want. And then the opposite of that is, is moving further and further away from it. And I, I like those signs from the universe, but you're right. Why settle for that and not the full-blown manifestation of what we expect? Because the universe isn't judging. It's not saying, well, you don't need 10. We're going to send you eight. <laughs> 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 Just vibe a little higher, bro. Vibe a little higher. That's right. What but this is also very – this is almost like a danger zone for some people too. Danger zone. Because um, – Danger zone. Because – that's when the the doubt settles in and you, the opportunity, because we're always, op- I, I believe in the law of perpetual transmutation. We're always in flux. And in that space of flux, we're always offered the potential, the, poss- the, the option to go up or down the spiral. We're never sitting still on the spiral. We're moving. Really oh, that's true. Flow. And moving up and down the spiral is natural. Uh, and I think, mastery is when you can step back and just witness yourself going up and down the spiral and enjoy the ride. But when you're in it and going up and down the spiral, these choices, a reflection on what's showing up are the opportunity to make a further point up by celebrating. Oh, I'm on the right track. Oh my gosh, I only got this or blah, blah, blah. And this is going wrong. And then, and then the, the potentials and the opportunities change. Yeah, you spiral up. Or I, just just today, I had that scenario where I found myself because I feel really good. I had a nice meditation. It's a beautiful day outside. Everything's every. There's nothing to be low vibe about in my life right now, really at all. And mm-hmm. I found myself sending this note uh, to Matt, our mutual friend Matt, a business associate of mine, about a frustration. And I stopped myself and I'm like, "What am I doing?" <laughs> now, I went into the other room and did a meditation zapped back out of that meditation and thought, I'm not even frustrated about that. <laughs> Five minutes ago, I was a different person because I was in <laughs> vibration and I, I caught it and stopped myself. Usually I catch it before I even go there, but this time I didn't. Mm. I just, kind of, by old habit, you know, a little lower vibration. Oh, here's yeah. what I'm going to complain about. And then, you know, five minutes later and, and just a little bit of raising of vibration, I'm not even frustrated about it anymore. It's mm. not even an issue to talk about anymore. And I was Mm -hmm. literally a different person in that vibe than I was five minutes later. And we're all like that. And do you know the the funny thing around that? Because this has been coming up in my group coaching a lot recently with people asking about when the past is showing up. I think sometimes, and this is where Dr. Joe Dispenza's work, I think for me, really starts to start bridging the gap between all of the, the spiritual stuff and the physical, because the neural pathways associated with those old ways of being are still there they're not as strongly but they're not as strong so we're not running on those neural pathways we're running on the new ones but those physical remnants of the neural pathway can sometimes be there and so you know we start to move a little bit down that direction because it's known all it takes is being unconscious for a minute and you can pop into that old neural pathway and start playing out those old behavioral patterns oh i'm going to text someone or etc yeah i call that your default vibration and yeah you can change your default vibration, but it takes work to mm-hmm. change your default vibration because you, when you get into lower vibration, you fall right back to that. You're right. Mm-hmm. I'm not nearly as scientific as, as Joe Spanza is, but it, 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 it's interesting because the stream's information so aligns with science, and I'm not scientific at all, but the science <laughs> actually backs it up. And to me, they back up the science. <laughs> because mm-hmm. I, put more, I put more stock in, in the stream, but that's me doing that mm-hmm. too my stream. Uh, I want to share with everybody too, that I, I posted it in my Facebook group, Taya Global Awakening yesterday. And Dan, I don't know if you saw it. And Walt, I'm not even sure if you're in that group, but um, it was a video of a very young Oprah Winfrey. 
Hmm. And they were asking her about her brand new talk show that she was launching. And she was young and didn't look like the typical talk show host at the time. And, and the reporter was saying, well, what if it doesn't work out? And she <laughs> smiled as confidently as could be and said, well, it's going to work out. And because what if he does it? And she says, well, even if it doesn't, my talk show or the success of my talk show doesn't define who I am or what I'm going to be. I just, the whole vibe of what she said shows you how important it is to be in that confident space and be in the isness of it and not be in the need of it. Mm. There was nothing about needing her show to be successful in her vibe of what she was saying. Nothing. If it's not, fine. it's going to be, but if it's not, that's fine too. It doesn't define who I am. I shared that far and wide because that is tangible evidence of her, you know, 30 years ago, um, 30, 25 years ago, you know, speaking her truth and understanding law of attraction, as she says she always has, mm-hmm. and stating that she wasn't in the vibration of need. She didn't mm-hmm. need the talk show to be successful. She didn't need that show to be successful for her own self-worth. I loved that. Mm-hmm. I shared that all over the place yesterday because I thought it was just fantastic. She's someone I'd love to meet. Yeah, she's a pretty cool person, no mm-hmm. doubt. You know, as you guys were talking there, uh, at one point, one of you, I think it was Dan, one of you were, made reference to a sign comes along and and the rest of, the, of your conversation recalled to me a conversation that I had with Cindy Chavez a few weeks back about signs in which we were discussing the fact that very often we hang on to signs and we say, you know, okay, but I, I had this sign, you know, two years ago that such and such was going to happen and it, and it didn't happen. And the point that uh, we kind of made was, well, that was two years ago. What does the latest sign tell you? Yeah. <laughs> You're reading signs yeah, from 150 you miles back. Five minutes and meditate and get another more positive sign and that quick and, and not hang on to something for two years. You're right. Because there's all these layers of reality. And we're, our default vibration is but one of infinite layers of reality. And so we can dial into another layer of reality really as easily as we allow ourselves to and allow that to start populating physically in our lives around us. So if you have the power to do that, that little sign comes and goes. and It's part of vibrational flow and it's in the moment and it's great. But just use all of these things as positive tools. If you have a positive sign, you're heading in the right direction. If you have a negative sign, you can raise your vibration. Mm. Go meditate. Probably change direction too. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's like the GPS, right? In five minutes, and you're good. You, you, you go in the wrong direction, and the GPS says make a legal U-turn. I mean, please make a legal U-turn at the earliest possible. possibility. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. But All I'm right, gonna, I'm going I'm to watch that video later. Yeah, um, I made a note of that actually. That sounds really cool. Yeah, it's in the Thai Global Awakening Group, and you can go in there and see it. I posted. Yeah, I'm going to go and have a look at that. I'm, I, I'm impressed that you found that. That's a really cool video to find. Good find. Well, it was on good old TikTok. I love TikTok. Ah, okay. You can get, you can, you can start curating your TikTok feed to be very educational, spiritual and otherwise education. It, it's, it's all kinds of stuff and there's billions of people on there. So it start, it, it's got an amazing algorithm that really gives you more and more and more of what you pay attention to and less of what you do not. Yeah. I, I think I got a bad taste because. Ariana is obsessed with TikTok, but her cousins like do little dance videos. And I was always watching nonsense on TikTok. I think. <laughs> yeah, get your own account and uh, it, it's going to show you, it's going to start learning you and show you more of what you're into. And mm. there, I've learned a lot of things on TikTok from people of all ages. It's, it's, mm. it's an interesting feed. It can be stupid and, and useless and a time waste, and you can spend two hours on it very easily if you want. <laughs> I've, I've seen that happen. And I have, but I generally do not. And I enjoy my time on it because it's curated enough now to where it's showing me the stuff that I'm into. And I, it's, I like it. I'd rather do that than just sit and stare at some television program. All right. Maybe Beautiful. I'll give it another try. You might see Dreamer CEO at Dreamer CEO popping up on a TikTok near you. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. <laughs> dun, dun. <laughs> now, as far as reaching people, I have two videos on there that have over 250,000 views. Wow. Yeah. And my, uh, my, the, the, the connections I got, I've gotten over 2000 connections just in less than two months on TikTok, I think. Wow. 2000 more people that have come through, uh, wanting the free meditation and stuff like that that we do. Yeah. That's really good. Cool. Yeah. And I've gotten, uh, at least two people into my boot camp from TikTok. Wow. 
Wow. Over what period of time? Uh, I've only been on about two months. Not probably not. Yeah, gee, that, that's not bad at all. Yeah. TikTok's a way to touch people's lives. Maybe I need yeah, to teach in one minute. I don't channel on there because I can't, as you have all seen, I cannot possibly get a channel. In and out. <laughs> but uh, I, I, in teach, and out. I teach Taya on there is what I'm teaching. And yeah. it's it's been very well received. That would be really interesting because it's, it's like a, a minute or something like that. You don't have a whole lot of time to play with, right? I, I really had to get used to getting a thought process out in one minute. In the beginning, it was kind of follow for more and all that stuff. So I quit doing that. Yeah. That's the vibration of need. I didn't need that. Mm-hmm. So I, uh, I I do get a thought process out now in one minute. And I do it without speaking too fast because I don't. when I'm speaking as David, I don't speak that fast. I mean, I, I could see how that would be a real problem if you're trying to, to stream the stream of consciousness because or a stream of David, actually. Well, same thing, really. But the, the stream of David and you... Uh, you, you spend like, you know, 20 seconds getting in and then you get, you know, 20 seconds to say something and then you got 20 seconds to get back out and finish. It's like, wow, that really wouldn't work too well. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And it's, and sometimes I, I have to get in the vibe of that too. When I get in the vibe of it, I can do five or six of them all at once. Just boom, 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 no mistakes. And if I'm not the vibe of it, of course, I'm fumbling all over the place. I'm forgetting my <laughs> words. You know, one mistake, you've got to start all over again. Maybe you just got to teach the stream how to run TikTok so that you can get into <laughs> consciousness and then they set you up. They push the button. Can you get in and, and stream some consciousness in one minute or less while watching this video? <laughs> I find those 3D distractions take me out of it. That's why when I'm on, I always have a host with me mm-hmm. reading the questions. It, right. For me, it takes me out of it. I know Esther, uh, I think she does lives now and she's channeling and she's sort of keeping up with reading questions and stuff like that. Right. Uh, but it takes me out of it. She's got 30 years uh, on. Yeah, behavior. that kind of helps, you know, honing I'm your sure skill. I honed a little more than I do, but uh, it does take, I, I like just being in the flow and I love being on with other people and then just having the questions come through that way is great. Yes. I think that's the secret to success with any kind of a podcast. Actually, that's for me, that's been, you know, the big formula right there. So, all right. Well, then we're going to give you your 20 seconds to get into contact with the stream. And uh looks like Daniel's getting all muscled up for it. So, you know, it's going to be... I thought he was flexing over there. What was that? <laughs> no, I had, a, I, had a, I had a thing, and I just realized, oh, I am flexing. I, had a... <laughs> I ran out of CBD. We know, we know. You can go to the gym where you are. We can't. Uh, <laughs> I, ran, I ran out of CBD, and um, that's like my – that's the magic source for mosquito bites. Uh-huh. Um, uh, I don't really like using the chemical muzzy bite things or scratching them. And I panicked. I thought I had a muzzy bite, and I didn't. It was just like a slight irritation on the arm. Ah, okay. So, right. CBD enough. seems to be a miracle uh, medicine for sure. Oh, yeah. It's great. I will use it to sleep, and it works. It definitely helps you sleep if you have trouble sleeping. Mm-hmm. Well, while David connects, I'll just remind people, this is my opportunity to uh, tell people if you haven't downloaded the LOA Today app, please do so. And if you have downloaded it and if you're enjoying it, as I know so many people are because they write in and then say that they're enjoying it, which is wonderful, you know, tell a friend about it because we're trying to share and get more and more people involved and, and give more people the opportunity to grow their lives and, and develop the, the lives of their dreams that we all really want to have. That's why we do all this stuff. That's why we talk about all this stuff, to have that perfectly abundant life. By perfectly, I don't mean everything is perfect. I mean that it is just wonderfully abundant at all times. So, you know, share and tell a friend. And by the way, also, if you are enjoying the uh, uh, the visuals on those times where you're actually seeing a YouTube video of us, you know, why not subscribe on YouTube and get more of it? And it's another way to uh, both subscribe and to tell a friend because it's easy to tell a friend about YouTube as well. So I see that look on David's face that tells me he's connected. Hello, stream. We are here. And we are glad to have you here. And we don't have a ton of questions, but the questions that we have, particularly the first one, is going to, I think, generate quite a bit of conversation because mm-hmm. it's it's like so many questions they the, the the question applies to the person who's asking the question, obviously, and the person we're we're, at, we're reading the question for. But these kinds of more general questions, like this person have, apply to so many people. So really, this is going to be answering questions, I think, for a lot of people who are tuned in and listening in. So this is from Jim, who has no last name, <laughs> and the question is: I need clarity on my life's direction and how it is intertwined with my soul's consciousness decision to project into this particular life. I have always believed that life is supposed to come easy for me, and as David says, the universe pampers me. 
I believe in the magic of things and have faith and trust that things are always working out for me. I was a relatively carefree kid and maintained much of that as an adult. In fact, I'm accused of not living up to my potential because I have this belief. <laughs> but my father used to tell me, you're an attractive white man living in America during the greatest time in human history. There's nothing holding you back from success. So the accusation of not trying hard enough runs counter to my belief in allowing the universe to pamper me. Can you help me sort out these tangled beliefs? Thank you. We, we will begin by stating that the sorting out of the tangled beliefs is part of your purpose mm. as a physical being. We will offer guidance, however, in, in that your unique strand of soul consciousness that projected in, in, into the life that you were experiencing at, at this time that you were perceiving absolutely aligned with the set of circumstances that that you projected into and your point of entry and the degree of difficulty for lack of better terminology in, 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 in human words is a reflection of the degree of expansion your soul was seeking in the vibration that was present when the decision was made vibrationally to project Meaning, if you projected into a life of relative ease, your strand of soul consciousness, and, and, and certainly we say this as we say all things without judgment, was not seeking a great deal of expansion during its time here on Earth in that vibration. However, you see plenty of examples of souls that project into lives of expected ease and disrupt that ease with rifts within the family, with addiction, with, with, with taking on certain characteristics that, that, that ostracize you from your, your life of relative ease. You disrupt your pattern. And that is a sign of your soul consciousness unrest with the life that you are experiencing. And, 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 and it is sort of pulling back and allowing your ego to expand to a place that drives you to soothe your disconnection with your soul consciousness self through physical pursuits, through overindulgence in things. This could be food. This could be what you label drugs. This could be alcohol. This could be pornography. This could be gambling. There are endless things that, that distract you and, and, and temporarily soothe and create this disruption in your lives. The true purpose of, of all physical is to experience the vibrational flow up and down, positive and negative, and in the downward flow of negative, create obstacles. Notice things that are, are, are not a preference. Notice things that, that the, the ego consciousness wants to change, expand, evolve beyond. All of that is new creation. When it's allowed to to be realized in an upward vibrational spiral, meaning there are no solutions to the problems that you create in low vibration, in low vibration. That is your negative creation territory. But when polarity takes your vibration back up, as, as it will inevitably do, you get into that high vibrational state and you hearken back to these problems or you are beginning to realize and experience these problems that you've created in lower vibration and you begin to solve them. In one way or another, you're creating something new, something physical, your desire for your planet's improvement, all of these things. Human consciousness is an extremely powerful creative tool. All consciousness is, but specific to your planet, human consciousness is, is extremely powerful. Th this is why human beings are able to create cities and transportation and currencies and all of these things, including the recreation continually of your planet itself. All of this new creation is expansion and contributes to the expansion of the universe. So the encountering of unwanted things in your lives and the allowance of an upward vibrational flow into solutions and the creation of the solutions to the things that you created when you were in low vibration that you consider obstacles, that is your purpose. And there are things that you enjoy on your planet that you desire very much and moving yourselves more and more toward being able to experience them while you are here perceiving in this way 
that also creates expansion because your disconnection from them materially creates an obstacle for you. So you see something that you want, a healthier body, a, 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 a loving relationship, a, a, an improved planet, uh, living in a place that, that is more to your liking, a, a job or a business that is something that you find more joy in than what you're doing now. Whatever it is, that disconnection with the desire to achieve it drives you to creation. And that creation is why you come to physical. Because when you are not in physical, you are indeed existing in a state of pure positive, a state of bliss, if you will, a state of perfection. But there is no contrast offered there. Contrast is offered in physical, physical expressions of source, physical expressions of the energetic realm. The contrast that is offered creates the expansion of all of it. And you flex between your endless physical existences as a physical being on endless planes, simultaneously experiencing your version of, of physical reality and having preferences toward things in that physical environment that you prefer and having a vibrational flow that allows some to flow in and, and other things to be desired and not achieved. And in the, the achieving of them or even in the striving to achieve them, you are expanding as a being. And as your being expands in physical, your non-physical being, the wholeness of that which you are, and you all have this, is moving more and more in, into what we describe as the core of source energy in physical terms, becoming more at one with our energy because you are all part of us. That is the purpose of coming to physical. So your purpose, to, to boil this, this very complex answer down to something very simple, your purpose is to learn to meet your obstacles in joy because if you have the power to create that obstacle and you create every single obstacle that you encounter, you also have the power to solve that obstacle and grow as a human being in that process. And that human being ego growth contributes to your eternal being growth. And you mentioned human consciousness and you specified that as being not separate, but as a maybe a special case of consciousness in general. Could you, could you elaborate a little bit more? What's what's the difference between consciousness and human consciousness? Human specific consciousness is simply your your strand of consciousness that is projected into human, and you acquire this element of consciousness that you describe as ego. Your, your humanness, okay. and you come to this world with a balance of ego consciousness and eternal soul consciousness. Think of the time at birth that that infant is learning to, to, to operate in its new environment. There is contrast offered immediately in the disruption of the bliss of the womb into the birth scenario. And in that contrast, the discernment of preferences is an instantaneous manifestation. Light, Voices, sounds, temperature, all of these things begin to be perceived differently instantaneously. And that infant is then set off on a human path. And at that point, the soul consciousness, the eternal consciousness is present, but the eternal consciousness is not human. Therefore, that infant is not operating very efficiently as a human being, if you will, because that eternal consciousness is not about being human. It is about being eternal, all-knowing, all-seeing. And the, the ego consciousness that is, that, is, that is being developed at that time is overshadowing all of that. And the overshadowing takes over more and more and more in early childhood. And this is where every physical being begins learning contrast and is set off on a life path until you gain the tools to disrupt it one way or another through your ability to change your beliefs and rewrite that history. Where you get yourself stuck in a life path is when you hearken back to that early childhood lesson that you believe you learned and, and, and replay a different version of that lesson over and over and over again, continually attracting the same set of scenarios, same set of circumstances, perhaps loop, moving the needle a little bit vibrationally as you mature into adulthood. But very often, the, 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 the things that are encountered very young in life are encountered in different ways throughout a lifetime. 
until the tools are required to disrupt that train of thought and significantly begin changing the life. And you are all offered a window of opportunity, at least one in your lifetimes to that. You stumble upon things. It could be religious teachings. It could be spiritual teachings. It could certainly be the, the elements of, of self-confidence and other skill building, mental, uh, mental building, uh, teachings that you encounter. You all have these windows that open and close and, and you choose whether you, you pass through them or not and begin to absorb different teachings. And at your highest level of creation, you are continually absorbing new information, wanting to go deeper, being curious, desiring more. But there is no requirement from us that you do that whatsoever because you are receiving expansion in this lifetime regardless. But there are different levels of expansion offered depending on how much evolution you allow within your own balance of ego and soul consciousness while you're here. Wow, great answer. Um, another concept that was in there was the concept of recreation. And could you take a moment to just kind of define what that means, how that applies in our, quote, real world, unquote, and why it's important? We speak, we speak very often of expansion being the, the reason for physical. The, 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 the endless physical environments into infinity. The, 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 the purpose of physical is expansion, and, and expansion is what creates physical and expands consciousness. And the, the expansion that we speak of includes every element of the environment that you are perceiving. And, and of course, in this interaction, we are speaking to you through what you would call a human channel to other human beings on planet Earth. So we are speaking specifically to planet Earth, which, which is not unlike the, the infinite other physical environments and its, its core of operation. But for planet Earth, understand that your planet began as a speck of dust, and consciousness expanded that speck of dust to what you are living on now. And the, 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 the planet that you are encountering is continually being regenerated and recreated. All, all, all existence on your planet is. And what you would call life is at the forefront of that recreation. But everything else is derived of life. You, you, you have a certain awareness of this through your science at this time, but you will become more and more aware that the, the elements of life on your planet are actually the building blocks of the things that you consider non-life on your planet. Yeah, that, that's a, it's a tantalizing taste you just gave us right there. <laughs> the fact it, that it, uh, it, we are recreating... In terms as, as endless on. layers of physical reality being expressed simultaneously with endless options for what's next. But what's next is rarely that disruptive as far as achieving it because the, 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 the needle is flowing through these different realities, not being moved significantly because of the vibrational flow. This is why you do not come here with the power to just manifest every single thing that you want instantaneously. Vibrational flow ensures that you are going to be in high vibration, manifesting some of the things that you want so that you can enjoy your experience while you're here, and then you're going to go in low vibration, and you're going to slow and cancel some of those things. Not only that, but manifest some obstacles to overcome, including illness, and, and including war, including all of these negative things that you perceive on your planet, actually drive the expansion when you are back up in high vibration. Mm -hmm. You have time and distance. And some things, especially the things that you consider very monumental in your world, that time and distance is longer before you begin to appreciate it, before you can come to see what the value in that thing was. We understand that not one of you wants, wants war and destruction, certainly not one of you that are, are, are interacting in this way, want these negative things. But when you come, and this is specific to Jim, and, 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 and will radiate out to, to all creation from there, when you come to the place where you can meet your obstacles in joy, understanding how they serve you, and allow your vibration to go back up, knowing that you can solve whatever obstacle comes your way, then you've got it. Then you understand the process of creation. And that is not going to take you to a state of perfection. Because now you understand vibrational flow. You manifest some things that you want. You go down, you manifest some obstacles. Perhaps you lose some of the things that you manifested when you were up. 
You go back up and manifest some solutions and you manifest some other things that you want. This is the process of creation. This is why you are not existing on a planet where everything just comes one after the other after the other. And notice that the things that you place the most importance on are the things that tend to take the longest to manifest. Mm -hmm. This is because you are focusing on them over and over and over again, and you are focusing on them in different flows of vibration. So you, you are at the top of your vibrational spiral, if you will, and you are dreaming about something that you desire, whatever it is, and you are creating it. Your vibration inevitably is going to flow down due to polarity, regardless of who you are, what you do, including daily meditation and all of these things that we promote you are still going to have a vibrational flow. And when you go down, you're going to create some obstacles in your life. And then you're going to flow back up. And when you learn to ride this flow and appreciate and enjoy all of it for the creative process that it is, then suddenly you are living a very different physical human existence. That is what we are guiding all of you to, is to understand the, the, the vast power and vibrational flow that it exists to create a more perfect version of. Because when the vibration goes down, the flaws come up. When the flaws come up and you raise in vibration, you can now address the flaws because you have the tools to do so. Because you created them in the first place. And in, cre and in correcting these flaws, you are creating a more perfect version of whatever it is you're wanting to create. That's why your big creations take longer and need to go through a period of vibrational flow so that you create a more perfect version of that thing that you want so badly. Wow. I mean, that, there, there's so much meat in what uh, David just translated from you right there that I'm not sure where to even begin, but I'll touch on a few things just to kind of stimulate the conversation a little bit further. Um, the idea that, first of all, when we're in that, uh, that downward spiral and things happen that we created, it's good. It's not a bad thing. It, I mean, it may be uncomfortable while we're going through it, but it's a good thing. And then it's leading to the new, the, what'd you call it? The, uh, the perfecting of the thing, it, it, the new perfecting of the thing that happens on the upward spiral. Then it's followed by another downward spiral that has the same kind of effect. And it's just like this ongoing thing where all of it is happening in a way that is wonderful. It's n none of it's really bad. That that's like, that that's so radical compared to what humans normally think about when we think about what happens in our lifetime experience. So it, for many people, like you've mentioned before, it's just, it's, it's more than most people can absorb. But for those of us who are kind of on the cusp of being able to absorb it, wow, that's mind blowing. And understand that, that, that you are here absorbing it now because you are ready to, 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 to think this way. You, you are ready to absorb it. Humanity is ready to absorb it. That's why we are flowing through David the way that we are. That's why that there, that at this time there are not 10 million people following every word that we share. Mm. Because much of humanity is not ready for that. Much of humanity is, is, is back in understanding that they create their own reality. But notice how rapidly your planet has advanced since that idea went mainstream. True. Mm. That rapid advancement, you know, almost too rapid for many of you. Mm -hmm. and you, you are seeing the effects of that. And that knowing from the time humanity came to fully understand, not all of humanity certainly, but, but a, a much larger swath of humanity came to fully understand that you were all creating your own reality. And then you had a little bit of time to play with that idea, not hundreds of years or thousands of years, but tens of years. Mm. And, in, 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 and in the process of creation, that is a sure sign of how, how much your time is speeding up in your world. And that time speeding up is now causing the consciousness to step forward and question everything. And, and, and this is why you see so much transition on your plan. And we guide you not to be frightened of, of, of any of it because it is all a very positive thing. Humanity is ascending to a higher vibration collectively. We have been saying that for years through David now. And, 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 and there are continual evidence of that populating all around you. Uh, Daniel and I did a program uh, for television last Thursday. We're trying to uh, get this uh, this program, this this podcast, onto television and reach a larger audience. And in the course of doing that, we are obviously reaching out to people who have little or no knowledge of any of this stuff. So we kind of were going back to basics, and Dan did a wonderful job of just laying out a very basic foundation to begin understanding it. Um, 
but I'm also curious uh, if if I had had you on that show instead of Daniel, what what would your focus have been to help people who are first exposed to all these concepts for the first time? How would you have tried to lay that foundation now? That would have been a, a, a co-creative experience based on the vibration of the moment. Mm -hmm. Okay. You have listeners right now who are asking deeper questions and receiving deeper answers because of the asking. Mm. The vibration of, of, of a, an earlier stage set of teachings would automatically meet that expectation. Mm. Yeah, that's true. There would not need to be a plan or even an intention around it because the audience would be extracting something different from us. Yeah, good point. Yep. Okay. Well, then I was just going back to another sign that was an old sign once again. <laughs> That's fine. Um, I have a, a question of my own that is quite different from uh, the question that Jim was asking, but I thought I'd bring it up just because it's it's another element of, of in being involved on Earth with other beings. And in this case, I'm talking about pets. Um, right now, we have, my, Louise and I have two pets, two cats, um, that we're very pleased and, and blessed to uh, give care to. One is very much of an outdoor cat. The other one's very much of an indoor cat. And the outdoor cat, we're at a time of year where it's getting very, very cold out. The last few days have been near uh, the freezing temperature. And so we've been concerned. Like, well, you know, this is, that's where it can become a little bit uh, difficult for a cat physically to survive. And so we're wondering, well, geez, when is he going to come in? You know, trying to send energy to him. Like, you know, why don't you come in where it's nice and warm and so forth? He's having none of it. He, he, he's willing and happy to be out there. And he is... You know, he basically comes home just to get fed so he can go back out again. And so I just wanted you to kind of address the fact that they, the, you know, cats and other animals, they are also beings of consciousness pursuing their own paths in their own vibrational way, mm -hmm. because that can be something we forget as humans. It, 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 they, are, they are often more aware of their balance of ego and, and what you would call soul consciousness the humans are you, you, the, the higher intelligence of the human brain has advanced humanity well beyond the, the world of your animals. Though, of course, so many of your domesticated animals have all of the benefits and none of the responsibilities. You <laughs> have to look at that. But the, the, the idea of needing to control the experience of any other being, be it your pet or your, your loved one, human being, it, it, it is an idea that we are wishing, if you will, to, to guide you away from, if you are ready to be guided away from it. Because every being is here having their own unique experience. And your animals understand their nature, a, a, a natural state of freedom and joy. And they innately understand that there's a level of risk involved in that. They are not the worriers that you are. No kidding. <laughs> we guide you to understand that very often your need to hold any other away from their own unique experience is rooted in ego, not soul consciousness mm. because your soul consciousness is not judging and is not fearing and is not needing to, to, to keep that, that animal in your life for a prolonged period for a soothing that is offered. The, the, the animals and even the humans in your lives, when you reach a space of being in total allowance of the in and out flow of these other beings, however that looks, and appreciating their process, whether they are flowing away from you because you are no longer a vibrational match and in, in, in the friendship or the relationship has dissolved as you knew it, we guide you to appreciate that. That is a sign of your own independent vibration, and you all have one. Mm. And, and, and when two beings seek to adjust their vibration to stay in alignment, very often it does not work out very well. And you see that. You see evidence of that. There's some of that, 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 that adjustment and that meeting in the middle that can certainly happen, especially in a romantic relationship. Sure. But by and large, being allowing of the other beings on your planet to have their in and out flow from your life, whether it's via a disconnection physically or, or, or a disconnection via them returning to their completed state, that which you call death, that is judged from an ego consciousness very often. And very often in that ego consciousness, it's, it is about the belief that you do not want to lose this being from your life because they are giving something to you. And when you release all of that, 
and simply be in full appreciation for all creation as it is, your life changes dramatically. You are suddenly in appreciation uh, of those around you that used to trouble you. You are suddenly in appreciation of those that choose not to be in your life anymore. You mm-hmm. are suddenly in appreciation of those who who choose one way or another to end their lives early. Yeah. It is a different way to live your lives. The things that we are offering are, are what David has called next age thought as opposed to new age thought. Mm-hmm. Ooh, I like that. I always love that one. You, you are ready for the next age, and, 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 and we are here to pave the way for that. And this next age of thought is an existence of non-fear and non-judgment by and large. And in releasing fear and judgment, there's still vibrational dust. We, we speak of detuning, not eradicating. The, the, the releasing of fear and judgment brings you to the state of freedom and joy in your 3D world. You, you often speak of living in 5D. Well, living in 5D is experiencing exactly the 3D world that you're in, but perceiving it very differently because you've released fear and judgment. Yeah, that's an exciting and uh, tantalizing and also a little bit intimidating path to be on at times, but it is definitely worth it. And it's, uh, speaking for myself, I'm just amazed every step of the way, some new thing happens. Some, sometimes it's just kind of disruptive. It's like, I don't know how to react to some things that come along. They, they, just, not because I, uh, they feel bad or something like that, but just because they're so far outside of my experience that I, I just don't know how to respond to it. I, like an example, I, um, I had an experience just the other night where I, it was toward morning, I was asleep, but I had what they call lucid dream type state, so I could actually actively consciously interact with my own dream state. And one thing that I have had a long history of is not being able to create visual images in my mind. I have a very, very difficult time doing that, and most of the time I'm unable to do it. But because I've been talking about it a bit here on the show over time, um, I, I've paid more attention to it. It's becoming a little bit more into my life, so every once in a while I'll get something. And I got something um, that other night. And what I got was I was I don't remember what the context was, but for whatever reason in my dream state, I was staring at sort of a gray field, if you will, and saying, I forgive fill in the blank. And I was filling in the, in the blank with a number of different possible nouns. And each time I said, I forgive, the background would turn into a pattern, a discernible pattern, like a, you know, a tile floor or a kaleidoscope or something like that. It would be still, but it would, it would become very detailed and very crisp, like I was looking at something physically. And I was thinking, whoa, I mean, that doesn't happen to me very often. But the more interesting part was it, I had a certain degree of com- command over it. I could say, I forgive, and would create a new background. I forgive, it would create a new background. I forgive, it would create another new background. And I, I didn't know what to do with it beyond that. It felt cool. But beyond that, I, I, I didn't know how to respond to it. It was so far out of my experience. You were, you were demonstrating for yourself. And, and when you say that you, you cannot create images in your mind, you, you can because that's what your dream state is. Yeah. You've not allowed yourself to yet do it in your fully awakened state. But Correct. in your dream state is showing you more and more how powerful your creative mind is. And, and what you're encountering in that dream is you are – showing yourself a physical version of the power of forgiveness in your life. The magic of. Mm. Yeah, and it was quick. I mean, I, I didn't even have to, to finish up with an object of the sentence. All I had to say were the words, I forgive, and instantly it would start to turn into something. Just the word forgive, bang, all of a sudden. You were coming to a place in your life where you were understanding that the, 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 the idea of forgiveness, and, and when we say forgiveness, we are speaking of full appreciation of. Finding full appreciation for the things that you consider transgressors in your life is very powerful, and you're learning more and more about that. And in your dream state, your vibration is, is attracting visions of that and, 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 and a dazzling show for you to show yourself how powerful forgiveness is for you. Yeah, and I guess that's the best way to, to appreciate it. So with that, I will thank you very much, Stream, for sharing time with us, and I'll invite you and David to uh, make your – separation so that we can talk with david again and while they're doing that daniel i gotta tell you this is getting better and better every time i mean first the questions we get are really really good questions Mm -hmm. that question that jim sent in 
really just kind of opened up exploration of how this whole process works in a really, really big way. Yeah. And I, I talk about appreciating. I'm appreciating that. that I was cool. scribbling notes frantically today. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I'm glad I take uh, hashtag notes because it reminds me, oh, yeah, I actually want to go explore what that thing is. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, pretty cool stuff. So there's David. Hello, David. I'm back. You're back again. <laughs> So I'll ask you again. I usually ask him. I know the answer, but I'll ask anyway. Do you remember any of that? Uh, I remember the dream thing toward the end. Okay. I remember a really deep explanation where I was sort of in the background saying, holy shit. <laughs> <laughs> You're experiencing, oh, my God, look what's coming out of oh, my mouth. <laughs> let me write this down right now. Right now. <laughs> now generally... Something those big ideas will kind of flow back in at some point, but um, yeah, now, I, I remember the dream thing. Mm -hmm. So I was seeing a, I, I remember seeing a kaleidoscope, and you must have said something about that in your. Yeah, uh, I was trying to describe these images that were coming. Forgiveness, that's what it was. Yeah, that's right. Every time I said the words "I forgive," an image would would come out of a grayness and just clarify into something really sharp I, and solid. I really feel there's something messagey in there. I feel a bit goosey. When you said that, did you almost like, yeah, almost like it's, uh, even for the visualizations that I create, like this whole thing of like the landscape, almost like the forgiveness was a key to unlocking another manifestation. Yeah. Of reality. Well, that's a, that's a big cornerstone of Taya and what the stream teaches is that we talk about this vibrational flow. It's a good topic to bring up because I don't think we talked about this before I brought the stream in, but when you have transgressor energy, down, and I always say down here in your lower vibrational field and polarity takes you down, that stuff sort of grabs you and pulls you down mm. the same way source grabs you and pulls you up when you go to neutrality through meditation. It holds you down. That's what keeps you in a downward spiral. And then you start thinking about stuff and then you start revisiting the times that you got burned and all, you know, it's all your negative creation territory. But when you clean up all that transgressor energy, your downward flow is a lot smoother. And so the forgiveness component is very powerful. And what we do as adults is we think, well, God, that was such a minor incident as a kid. That was no big mm -hmm. deal, but it wasn't because we were that age when it happened and that vibration was created and it still exists as long as we keep it active until we detune it. Mm -hmm. So the forgiveness process is the detuning process. So it, it is very magical. So you know, I, I think that you, you are seeing your soul consciousness presenting to you how magical it will be for you to go a little deeper in forgiving and appreciating your transgressors because it's going to up level you in your life. Mm. And I also, I, I tried to consciously engage in the same activity uh, going to sleep last night and it didn't work at all. I, I was apparently, I, I was manipulating rather than actually accomplishing something. So it was a reminder that you have to be in that flow before you can do anything. And I don't know exactly what I did to get it in that flow. Maybe just because I was asleep. I'm not really sure. <laughs> I was there somehow. I wonder if, because when you're trying to create something in your mind and you're fully awake, it seems that people that are more on the analytical side have a hard time using their imagination in that way because it's not so black and white where I'm the opposite of that. I can build a house in my mind and walk right through it and see every detail. Uh, I've got this new practice where I create the version of me that I want to be next. I sit down and have a conversation with that version of me because that version of me already exists. Mm -hmm. So I'm just visiting that other version of me to sit down and say, Hey, how'd you get here? You know? <laughs> what are you doing differently that I need to do and incorporate? And it's very powerful. It's very powerful because you, you merge into being that being that you want to, to, to expand to. And you can actually sit and have a conversation with it. Hmm. And I don't Dan, or have you ever done anything like that? Yeah, I do similar in, um, especially in my, um, visualization work. A lot of the, whenever I do live programs, we always have a variation of something where we do something I call the quantum mirror, where I drop them into trance. We create, uh, a space of creation in that level of consciousness and create a quantum mirror with the future self in the mirror visualize it and then allow that to step out and then we integrate we actually do a, a merging of the future and current self yeah it's, it's a very powerful process mm. when you mentioned that 
analytical people can have an issue that certainly touched me because that's me. I, I've been analytical all of my life, and I suspect a large number of our listeners are also analytical. Do you have any ideas about why we have so much trouble with it? Well, I think it's more when you're analytical, you, you want the black and white version of everything, and the the imagination version of things isn't is honored as much. Because in our world, analytical analytics is 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 very highly regarded. Yeah, you you can absorb things, data and information, and process it, and it's a good thing. And you're you're taught for years and years and years that it's good. And this is how you should think, mm-hmm. and you're good at it. Where I was dreamy, you know, so start paying attention. Not paying attention in class, David. You're not <laughs> your brother at all. My brother's an my brother's an accountant. My sister's an attorney, and I'm the middle child. So go. For it. <laughs> <laughs> so. Uh, I, you know, I heard that for years and my brother was so smart and what's wrong with me and all this. Mm. And I, I think I'm smarter than him now, to be honest with you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm very, I'm highly creative. Yeah. He is highly analytical and it's very hard for him to move out of that black and white space. But I can be analytical when I have to be analytical. I used to be in a corporate job running hundreds of millions of dollars worth of business. I had to be analytical sometimes. So if I can make myself be analytical and tap into that, and when I say make myself, tap into the vibration of, I think you or anyone who is analytical and struggling can dial up that vibration. When I wrote my first book, I di- I was having trouble being as lyrical as I wanted to be in my writing, mm-hmm. and I dialed up writer vibration. I dialed up Wayne Dyer vibration because I liked his writing and tuned into that. And I'm not saying I was specifically channeling Wayne Dyer, I was channeling the human author version of him. And we all have the power to dial into these things. So just think of this, you know, if you have serious radio or cable these days with thousands of channels that you can dial into, just imagine there's a station playing that's playing exactly what you need at all times. And you just need to use your imagination to dial into it. And when you use your imagination to bridge the gap, you have created the pathway to it. Your imagination creates pathways. So I think maybe for an analytical, think of, thinking of it in, in scientific terms like that, that your imagination is creating the pathway to mm. the station that you want to dial into. So if I, I mean, being analytical, of course, that means I want to take a step-by-step approach. So if I'm going to take a step-by-step approach, I guess the first step is to get into that vibrational match of whatever the problem is doing. To, to know that there's a station playing exactly what you want to dial into. Mm-hmm. whatever energy, whatever vibration, more money, better writer, better health, you know, whatever it is that you want to dial into, there's a station that's already playing that out there. It's playing your favorite song on that topic right now. And then you just have to bridge the gap by using your imagination that you are now tuned into that station. And not only are you tuned into it, because when you tune into it, you become it. You become the essence of that. It's not all that you are, but you become in that moment the essence of it. So when you need to tune into writer energy, you create the channel of of whatever means, you know, to me, Wayne Dyer meant uh, a a spiritual writer whose writing I admired so that I created that station and then use my imagination to to place myself in that vibration. Mm -hmm. Okay. So it's actually a more specific intention that you're setting there. Yeah. Intention of, of I'm going to be in the same vibrational space as usually a person, I guess, some expert. Yeah, well, we, we are all channels. This, this stream thing is coming to everybody all the time. I've just, I've had it for so long that I'm able to speak it. Mm-hmm. With ease. And it doesn't mean that everybody's going to go out and speak it or even should bother with that. But being able to dial into the energy of, we're doing that all the time. We're all dialing into the energy of all the time. You know, why, uh, you know, and Elon Musk, uh, who got his start, did he get his start in PayPal? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Banking mm-hmm. is now one of the biggest car manufacturers in the world. Yeah. Was and all making spaceships. Business? Spaceships. Yeah, now spaceships. <laughs> so, but, you know, was his dad in the car business and his granddad was in the car business and he used to work on engines and he thought it was so. No, not at all. Uh, actually, he was a fan of science fiction and that's why right. he's doing he all that stuff. Got the imagination and the financial means and the confidence, the perfect storm of, of everything that you need to be able to birth this new car brand from nothing. That's one of the most valuable car brands on the planet now in just a few years. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Competing against and outselling, you know, brands that have been around for centuries. Absolutely. Yeah. 
Very cool, as usual, guys. I mean, th this is why I love doing the show. I get this high-powered talent on there, and they teach me all this stuff, and my listeners get to listen to it, too. And we just sit back and say, wow, this is great stuff you guys are teaching us. So thank you very much, very, very, very much for all the stuff that you guys are sharing, and I look forward to doing it again with you next Tuesday, David and Daniel. I look forward to talking to you again on Thursday. I shall be and here. It's going to be a good thing. Um, thank you also to our podcast listeners as well, and we'll see you all next time here on LOA Today. Goodbye, everybody. Goodbye.